Tonight, we are enjoying a 1950s Trader Vic Scorpion Bowl. It was made with orange juice, lemon juice, or jot syrup, brandy, and silver rum. It's blended with pebble ice and served in a communal bowl, like you can see right here. If you want to see a video on how to make it, click on the link below. It'll take you to a video that I just posted. We are here in my home tiki bar, The Breezeway, with Vincent and Magda, the New Jersey-based owners and operators of High Tide Recordings, the record label that my band, The Hula Girls, also happen to be a part of. Uh, Vincent and Magda also find time to operate a beauty and grooming company. That's right. Called, yeah. I'm sorry, what was it? Big Slick Pomade. Big Slick Pomade. Lady Luck Brand. Lady Luck Brand. Yeah. So I guess my first question, for, well, first of all, welcome, guys. Cheers. And, Cheers. Uh, Let's see if we can, can we get do a little. It? Uh -huh. Yeah. Oh. Cheers. Right there we the go. head. <laughs> Delicious. So I guess um, my first question for you guys is that in this musical climate, or I guess this business climate, why would you possibly want to start a record label? A lot of it was out of necessity. Uh, there are so many great surf bands that are out there um, mm -hmm. that are new or up and coming, and there haven't been labels really in the last couple of years that have had interest in taking on new artists and uh, being involved in final projects and putting new music out so we felt like we really needed to be a, a part of that mm -hmm. and help give these bands an opportunity to release new music and vinyl has been the focus yeah. um, largely 45s but more recently we've had some some bigger LPs that we've been putting out which is pretty exciting and you guys yeah. don't do CDs at all right no, I mean, if there is a, a specific event and maybe timeline is a big crunch, uh, sure, but mm -hmm. it's really, we're spoken, focusing on vinyl just because it, it feels like um, it's coming back, yes, and I think there's a, a big appreciation for that format now. Sure. Also, you know, a lot of bands don't want to deal with the business side, the logistics of getting a record out. <laughs> That's you know, true. Mix, like ma mastering, <laughs> um, you know, artwork, dealing with the pressing plants and yeah. timelines and release dates, digital, uploading to the digital platform. So um, I get just as much, you know, uh, fulfillment out of that as I do working with my own music. Yep. Um, I love doing that for other bands. So just, you know, being able to kind of clear that space for bands to just focus, focus on making great music and we'll handle the logistics piece. So um, High Tide Recordings kind of like took this, like the whole vintage scene by storm. Like it, it seemed like you, like you just kind of, I, kind of popped out of nowhere and then we're running every pool party, uh, events like Nashville Boogie, you guys had your DJ sets there. It seemed like all of a sudden, if you're paying attention, uh, High Tide Recordings was everywhere. So I guess, um, tell me like a little bit about the mission statement of the, of the brand and kind of what, I guess, what drives like the enthusiasm. Well, you know, as Magda started to say before, you know, um, we, we want to bring new artists to market. Mm -hmm. And there's this nostalgia that sometimes exists around, like, roots music that, um, sure, we appreciate, of course, the 60s uh, surf uh, bands, and we love them. Uh, of course, the, you know, the, the, the second wave stuff in the 90s, um, amazing. Um, but we we don't want to be a label that just kind of like looks back and thinks that the best is behind us. Sure. We think that a lot of the great music in this genre is happening now and, and yet to come. Mm -hmm. There's uh, still heavy influences in all, a lot of the new artists. It's just important to us that they get to have the opportunity to play these big stages and these events. And um, that's sort of how some of our involvement with these other festivals mm -hmm. has happened, with the pool parties especially. Also, I'm persistent and annoying as you as you know I do I do that's, know that that's a fact but it's all it's all with the best intentions for the music and for the band so I, I really yeah. do appreciate that and like I think you've been a blessing to the whole surf like music scene both of you guys like awesome. it's, yeah I think it's a really big deal I have like three favorite modern surf bands that I really like I, I really really love and it's the surfer jets I think First of all, like the girls are all very sweet and highly talented musicians. Uh, Messy Chups from Russia, I think their music is incredible. Also Svetlana, because she's gorgeous and also incredible. Yeah, also incredible. Very talented, yes. <laughs> very talented, yes. yes. Um, but really, that band, like, that's just that's just like a a bonus. That band is so good. But the other one really is the Black Flamingos, and I'm not really I'm not saying that because you're just sitting here. You're but just I, saying that. <laughs> I, so sweet. I really do. I, I think your guys' approach to surf music is so different. Um, it's like it seems like it's 
maybe it's got some jazz influences. Absolutely. Um, I do like kind of a, like the noir kind of vibe to it. Nice. You're not doing a recreation of 1963 or one or two or whatever. But yes. So I don't know. Tell like tell me a little bit about the Black Flamingos. So you, you nailed it. Um, you know, both Robbie and Declan both have jazz backgrounds. Mm -hmm. uh, so I knew them both kind of as independent musicians. Um, you know, Robbie and I, our old bands played together. Declan's actually my brother-in-law. Oh wow, it's Magda's uh, <laughs> yeah. Magda's brother. You're married. Yes, <laughs> just we got, are. We just got married in <laughs> Five Vegas. Years. In Vegas, drive-through <laughs> wedding. Um, right yeah, but um, knowing those two individually, I just sort of, you know, when I, when I came up with the band name, which mm -hmm. was just this funny... That was the first thing. Funny realization from some article I saw. There were there was some exotic black flamingo that was spotted in Cyprus, yeah. and I thought it would be funny to pluralize it. Um, but as soon as I came up with the band name, I thought, I need to get Robbie and Declan in the same room. Mm -hmm. So called them both up, got them together on like a Wednesday night, and we... Uh, so wrote two songs that he night. Did. But yeah, you're right. You know, again, we're not trying to recreate a sound. And, you know, we're not the first band ever to do sort of this, like, noir uh, feel sure. with surf. But um, I think that Rob and Declan both have, you know, really unique takes mm -hmm. um, uh, on the on the genre. And um, I think that this latest record, Play Speedway and Other Hits, really kind of captures what the band is like live. Totally. Um, but yeah, it's been, it's been a really fun project. And, uh, you know, it's... it's uh, We've had a lot of great opportunities. At your high tide summer holiday uh, in New Jersey that you brought us out to, to, to perform at the pool party. Yeah. Uh, the Your performance after all the big main stuff had happened, your performance in that weird little hallway kind of venue thing was absolutely my favorite part of the whole weekend. Wow. Yeah. That means a lot. That was a magical... It was magical, just a party. Like it was yeah. A, yeah. That was a magical, magical moment. We hadn't played together in a while, uh -huh. and um, the energy was just kind of, you know, the right. It was the right vibe. Everybody was kind of just still on a high from what a great lineup that was on Saturday night. It really was. Uh, everyone, you know, the five, six, seven, eights were done. Everyone just kind of let out into the hotel, and uh, definitely a, a memorable performance. So yeah. Thank you for being there. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> also, the Black Flamingos name. So uh, earlier we were we were record shopping for 45s and stuff, uh -huh. and you found uh, a Martin Denny Exotica record picture sleeve thing, yep. and I was quietly, angrily jealous, if that's a way to put it. Understandable. About you finding that, that thing. Was a gem. And I came, when I, I came to your hometown, uh -huh. one mile from your house. Uh huh. It's been there. It's been there, it's and been I just there. didn't see it or whatever. It was in the new releases, though, I think. Or new, new arrivals. arrivals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. True. I think Not some, new releases. someone definitely unloaded a, a nice 45 collection because we found some great exotica and loungy and Hawaiian. Yeah, yeah. yeah. for Those sure. It'd be nice at the Tonga Hut today. Definitely. Yeah. 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 So, with that, uh, I was also, when I first heard the name The Black Flamingos, I was also quietly and aggressively furious that I didn't come up ah. with it. <laughs> well, I feel the same way about the Hula Girls, well, so, so we're even. Thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> so you guys are currently on a DJ tour of the West Coast, and you yeah. just came from, uh, what, Vegas? Yep. Yeah. And um, so what inspires you to go on these DJ tours? I know that, uh, you know, um, it doesn't seem like DJs who do what you guys do really tour. It's not really a thing, is it? I don't think so, actually, and this is the first time we've ever done anything like that. Yeah. Um, we got married five years ago, and our honeymoon consisted of flying to Vegas yep. and spending a couple of days and then road tripping through the desert to Santa Barbara and down to Santa Monica, spending a little more time in L.A. Mm -hmm. um, so we wanted to recreate this little anniversary trip, and these are all places on the tour that we would go and get a cocktail because in the last five years of being married, we've gotten really more excited about tiki drinks and just really well-made cocktails. Yeah. So we'd be spending time there anyways. We've made some new friends in the last year or so uh, that are involved with a bunch of these bars. And it's really just friends extending an invite that we've taken the offer. And now but we're going to play some records and have some fun and have some good cocktails. That seems so, like a rad deal. Yeah. Yeah, it's been, it's been really fun so far. And uh, it, it's sort of just... We sort of built in some hangouts where we know that we'll like the music and that, you know, friends will come and the cocktails will be good. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Speaking of that, so what do you think about this drink? And I'm not I'm not asking you to judge my drink uh, making ability. I, I always say that I'm uh, sh like a shockingly good bartender, not because I like can do all that cocktail shit, sure. like the spinny stuff or like or that I have all this stuff 
in my head sure. or that I can work behind a professional bar. I couldn't do any of those things. Right. But I can follow directions really well. That's important. I'm kind of the same way. Yeah. 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 So Vincent's it's like the resident bartender in our house. Right. And yeah. and the most important thing about tiki drinks is measuring and using proper ingredients. You can't use Bacardi. Uh, there are certain some cocktails that call for Bacardi specifically. Yeah. Um, but you have to use good good ingredients and fresh squeeze juices and stuff. So right. what do you think of the the Scorpion from 19 the 1950s? I love it. I personally don't love sweet cocktails mm -hmm. in general. Um, and tiki drinks for me are usually less fruity. I enjoy the lemon, the orange juice. There's a tartness that mm -hmm. for me is just perfect. Yeah, I personally love a cocktail with brandy in it. Mm -hmm. uh, it just adds to the complexity. Um, and, you know, again, you can you can definitely tell there's orange. You can tell there's lemon in there. But neither one is too overly pronounced. They're really nicely balanced. Um, but brandy and rum is one of my favorite combos. So. So I chose this drink for you guys because it's served in a communal bowl and I think you guys are very impressive in the way that you're able to like DJ together, like run your business together. It, it seems like you're never fighting, so it's, it's uh... It's rare. It doesn't happen. <laughs> yeah, doesn't, so, yeah, so that was the reason why I chose the Scorpion. Oh, well, well, thank so, you. Yeah, cheers. we're cheers. very happy to be sharing it. Come on oh. in. Yeah, Come on here we go. <laughs> I'm just so fighting good. with your brim right now. Yeah, it's the only thing. <laughs> so um, the Hula Girls just performed at your High Tide Summer Holiday. Uh, yes. We re like we loved it. We thought it was a great event. Awesome. It took place in New Jersey in Asbury Asbury Park. Mm -hmm. Asbury Park. Yeah. yeah. So how did that start? And kind of what are the plans for the future? It was the lineup was incredible. Five, six, seven, eights, and Deke Dickerson and. Well, the Surfer Jess and the Neanderthal. Surfer Jess played like the, the last call element, so it was like the last hurrah of the weekend. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, it started as like a regional thing mm -hmm. where we would just sort of bring... Yeah, it was very small, more like tri-state area bands, yep. New York, Connecticut, New Jersey, mm -hmm. um, maybe some Massachusetts was mixed in there too. Yeah, year three, uh, we had the opportunity to be a part of booking Metro Chup's first U.S. tour. Yeah. Uh, Jeff, big tiki dude, pretty much handled all the logistics for the West Coast, and we handled the East Coast side. And that was our like really our first opportunity to book like and not only a national band but an international band. Yeah. We had been big fans for a long time. Yeah. Totally. So they were kind of our first like headliner, if uh -huh. you will. Year three. Year four we had those straight jackets. Wow. Um, which was a, a an exciting surprise. It happened a little unexpectedly. Um, we had put an offer in and didn't think they'd be available and we got a, a late acceptance of the offer and mm -hmm. both of us got pretty excited about that that's super exciting yeah that's a... and it was a fantastic year it was just really perfect weather wise we we were doing the event on the beach so it was just the best scenario mm -hmm. like 75 degrees gorgeous yep. uh, last year we had satan's pilgrims uh -huh. uh, yep. good friends of ours also last year's lineup was very like international uh we had Le agamemnons from france we had surfer, surfer joe, joe from, from italy. italy we also brought uh frankie and the pool boys out from the west coast the, the volcanics, volcanics. Mm -hmm. So last year's lineup was fantastic, but we did run into some weather challenges. There was mm. threats of thunderstorms, so we had to move inside, Right, which was a challenge. Um, so this year we, we decided to eliminate the weather contingency yep. and go back to where we started, which was Asbury Lanes. Yeah. Opened in 1960 or 61. That bowling alley that they've converted like half of it into a music venue is just incredible. It's yeah. beautiful inside. Well, and it's been like that. I mean, historically, before they went in for renovations, which moved us to the beach, um, they had the stage smack in the middle of the lanes. So they actually had lanes on either side of the oh, stage. Oh, no way. And a dance floor right in the middle. No way. It was a very cool setup. And even now, I mean, it's still, they've they've tried to keep that yeah. that vibe. Um, do they do bigger shows love. there now, too? Like, like. They like can. not state, not stadium size, and maybe not Stone Pony size. Or I don't yeah, know. How big it's got, Stone Pony it fits is. in nicely with the Asbury Park music scene because it's it's bigger than it used to be. The capacity is higher. Yeah, yeah. and it, you know, it uh, you know, there's there's some smaller clubs, there's some bigger clubs, but it's a nice kind of mid sized club. But you know, the sounds great, the lighting is great, uh, the staff is amazing. Mm -hmm. um, so it was, yeah, it, it was a nice change. I don't know. We were excited to kind of go home with yep. the event, and it was so much nicer to just know that our music plan was intact yeah, versus we having to wait. We weren't, we weren't like scrambling. That seems so. real nerve wracking to have to, to to worry about the weather and yeah. all that. For sure. Um, the the venue seems like about like like uh, House of Blues size capacity yeah. kind of thing. Yep. Um, so you're, are you planning on staying at that location and? We are. Uh, for, for now we're gonna 
go back in for a second year. I mean, it'll be year seven mm -hmm. for this event. Uh, originally, Asbury Park Circuit Music Festival. Now it's evolved to High Tide Summer Holiday, uh -huh. which was a kind of exciting rebrand. Um, but we're going to stick around there, and we are planning on taking the event potentially on the road yeah. and popping up in cities around the country and that's rad yeah so like it's a warp definitely... tour kind of thing or like a Lollapalooza not a, kind of, not I mean, not tour that like a big, smaller obviously. scale event that it wouldn't quite be as much of a weekender per yeah. se as what we've done in Asbury Park uh -huh. um, just because of the travel involved for us sure but we have some great people that are on the ground in some cities that we're pretty excited to to partner with yeah so stay tuned on that yes and so who's next year's headliner we have no idea <laughs> Thought we were uh, gonna get it. Break, breaking news there's, here. There's no, some bands. We're not holding out on you. <laughs> <laughs> We've reached out to a couple of bands, so we'll see. But uh -huh. you know, our big thing is you know started out as a surf music event exclusively. Uh -huh. So did our label. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and then we sort of recently sort of realized that you know there's other corners of the sort of like roots um, music scene that we want to be able to, to to support and bring in as friends, and also like bring more people into the event as well. So totally. you know, yeah. there's only so much. Um, you know, there's only so far you can take it if like if it's just surf music. So this year the lineup was quite quite diverse, and I think we brought in uh, people that we wouldn't have otherwise. Yeah, I think that you've positioned yourself in a good place where if you wanted to, you could have a rockabilly band in there, or I mean, we were the only band, I th what I think, with an upright bass. Right. Right. But then you can also do like '60s, and you can do garage, and you can do surf, and like it's it's kind of a good place to be because yeah. there are other there are other festivals that have. They're good that they have positioned themselves as this one thing. Yeah. But I think a lot of those those festivals are now also running into the issue of going, shoot, we've kind of had all our headliners. Right. And they're either dying off or they're, the interest of the music on that level is no longer Well, I think there's something appealing there. also when the lineup isn't necessarily all bands of the same genre. I think it keeps sure. the, the evening a little more exciting. Um, mm -hmm. We've found that just after attending some events and even our own, you mm -hmm. know, realizing that a long day with all the same music can be a little fatiguing sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and this just allows us to tap into some other artists that surf is not their main genre. And yep. we can maybe have them do some spotlight sets where they are pulling out some Link Ray tunes and doing more of a set like that. Totally. Or, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a new direction. One dream band we would love to have if mm -hmm. you're listening <laughs> Boogaloo Assassins from LA please Boogaloo Assassins I don't know them oh um, man but their it, name's rad they're like a 12 piece like super group like late 60s Boogaloo style wow so we'd have to pay for 12 flights to get them to the east coast that but sounds really expensive it is insane yeah so but. someday we'll figure out getting them maybe on tour on the east coast we always look up their dates though whenever yeah. we're in LA to see oh. if they're playing a show yeah. in the hopes that we can see them live yeah um, I'll keep I think them in mind magical. too yeah I'd love yeah. to see that too now yeah. Yeah. but yeah more, more to come as far as uh, lineup for next year I have I think one last question for you I don't know if you'll be able to answer it or not what was the first surf song it's credited as the first surf Ooh. song. It's very contentious. Do you know this answer? Like, is this a is this a I, credibility question? No, it's. I'm I'm curious as to what your opinion is because I've heard what I what it, what is it's supposed to be hmm. attributed to, but then like, you know, my bass player Shorty says no, that's well, that's not right, hmm. and then. Big tiki dude has his opinions. Yeah, sometimes right. there's different surf histories and uh, for sure, you know, opinions because on that. There, yeah, because there was artists that weren't anywhere near surf that maybe did an instrumental. Right. Uh, that's a tough one. And then, what do you attribute? What are like the hallmark signifiers of a surf song? I mean, reverb has to be there, I think, right? I I would say it's hard to pinpoint a song, but I would say that you know, Dick Dale is pretty widely. Widely known as sort of the the, the pioneer of the genre, uh -huh. you know. Um, so of course, from very early on. Yeah, yeah. but like, I don't know that there was any reverb on Miserloo, right? Right, which is why you know it it, it uh, doesn't necessarily have to be. I don't think there's any like rules necessarily. Yeah. Um, you know, as to like what constitutes surf, but uh, I heard. I, I, I honestly think it's more of a spirit. Yeah. Uh, or a beat than yeah. necessarily like the guitar sound. You know, you have that. That drum beat, um, you know, with uh, with the double snares and yeah, well, sure. There's a very distinct, uh, you know, rhythm element that. For me, it's you know, it was the dance music of the time. Yeah. You know, and for me, it, you know, if you can, if you can dance to it, uh, it's instrumental. 
Um, you know, reverb obviously is a big part of it, but you know, to your point, Miserlou doesn't really check that box. But I think I think there was some reverb on on Miserlou. I always heard Mr. Moto, and I don't know that there's any reverb on that either. So. I always heard Mr. Moto was was credited as the first surf song. Yeah, I was I was actually thinking that thinking that the Bel Airs, yeah. um, but yeah, I mean you know it's uh, it's the, the the beginnings are a little blurry in terms of like who wrote the first surf song ever, but you know Bel Airs, Dick yeah. Dale, um, you know those bands were uh, pioneers for sure. But then it's like Dwayne Eddy used a ton of reverb, right? But would you call that surf? Right. Well, I don't uh, think you know, so. He was more country. But right. We have we have. A handful of Dwayne Eddy 45s, mm -hmm. and we've got some LPs that we take out when we're DJing. Yeah. And was, it's was usually Link, this mix. Was Link Ray surf? Right. Not quite. I don't, not it's quite, sort of, but maybe. Yeah. yeah. It just it's, got a little more deliberate. Uh, deliberate as you get into the, you know, the the 60s. Uh -huh. um, you know, band, you know, bands like the Challengers. They would really kind of, you know, you'd see photos of the Challengers like. With you surfboards, know, or yeah, something. with surfboards, yeah, 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 so it got, yeah. got a little more deliberate, but yeah, the, there's like the, a visual to go along with. Sure, yeah. the beginnings are a little blurrier, which is okay. So maybe comment down below uh, what you think the first surf song was and why you think we're right or wrong or whatever. I don't know. Uh, my drink is done. You guys still have a, little, a little ways to go. Little ways to go. I want to thank you guys so much for uh, joining us with seven questions and a cocktail. Thank was you a blast. for having us. Was that seven yeah. questions? Maybe so, about I think that. Was, <laughs> I think so. Who's counting? Yeah. So anyway, from Spike, Vincent, and Magda, thank you so much for joining us, and Aloha. Guess that's it. Cool. Cool. Hell yeah. We made it. Yeah. We did it. That'll be fun. Yeah. I think you can Seven questions in a cocktail.